Okay, my lovely friends, here we go. It is me, Gregory Manorino. Wednesday, February 15th, 2023. As you can see, all different around here. I kind of just moved my desk towards the window, which is now in front of me. Uh, it's early here. It is now 5.52 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I always do these videos early, and as you all know, I like to use natural light for the most part. I'm trying to fix this issue with lighting in the morning end of the day lighting is okay but anyway so this is what you're going to see this is my office that's going out to the rest of the house over there all right anyway with that said let's uh let's move forward here let's talk about let's talk about a few things that are just completely <laughs> i was going to say the r word but i can't say that anymore it's, it's just you can't make it up let's start off with that so as you all recall we had with regard to inflation, temporary and transitory, I mean all over the place. That was the narrative being pushed by the mainstream propaganda ministry, like to the point of nauseam. And then it went from, you know, transitory and temporary to peaking. Oh, we're peaking, it's peaking. We heard that repeatedly over and over and over and over. When that turned out not to be true, they have a new word. The new word, again, you can't make it up. Are you ready for it? Sticky. Inflation? is sticky uh and it's that same word this is how you know they're getting the same script and i'm talking about cnbc bloomberg fox business all saying the same things okay sticky inflation is sticky it's sticky make it up um let's see how long that sticks around before they come up with a new narrative because inflation people in case you don't know unless you missed the big report yesterday well, the CPI report showed clearly by their own numbers that inflation continues to rise. And the last CPI report, they revised everything higher. So the number is, you know, it's fake anyway. Uh, and the interesting thing about the last CPI report that they revised higher, uh, it didn't get any coverage at all that I witnessed. I don't know about you, CNBC, Bloomberg, Fox Business, they did not even mention it as far as i know okay this next cpi report well the one we just got same thing everything's going to be revised higher inflation has nowhere to go as you are well aware of if you follow this blog but higher and i mean much higher central banks are not done they're going to continue to inflate they're going to buy assets now we have a problem this morning and you know what i'm talking about already I guarantee it if you follow this blog. The MMRI, as I am doing this, the last time I looked, like three minutes ago, okay, uh, was 243. 10-year yield higher. Relative strength of the dollar, much higher. That is putting pressure right now on gold and silver, the paper derivatives, okay? It's not real. It's not on the elemental chart, but that's what's going on here. Cryptocurrencies are catching a bid this morning. Crude oil under some pressure. So it's not a great setup, at least right now, for the market. Stock futures are lower. Now, with regard to uh, economic news and this whole sticky thing, <laughs> it's, it's sticky. Make it up, people. So um, here's, here's the thing. Retail sales or the retail sales number came in better than expected today. But what they're not telling you is credit card debt also hit a new all-time record high today. So what are people doing? They're swiping those cards, uh, and apparently retail sales came in better than expected. If this is real or not, I have no idea. But we do know that people are, in fact, using their credit cards more so than they ever have before. Personal debt, household debt, consumer debt, credit card debt, higher, 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 higher. And it's not going to stop. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this number come in maybe better than expected. I'll be honest with you. People cannot control themselves, especially in an environment where they um, are dealing with increased pressure. Because what do people do? They look for something to pacify uh, their anxiety. And... Uh, to get a, a hit or a, a fix, you know, hell, I'm going to go buy this. I'm going to swipe and I'm going to go buy this and that and the other thing and on and on and on and on. So, you know, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised to, uh, to see that that's actually true. Now, we found out something else. And again, no surprise to you or anybody else who follows this blog here. The activity here in the United States and around the world with regard to industry and factory production is in free fall. 
as the global economy continues to contract faster. So here in the United States, and it's interesting how they're spinning this, the U.S. factory index remains in contraction, which means it's shrinking. Makes sense to you, right? But the mainstream media is being told to spin it this way. Oh, the number came in a little bit better than expected, but we're still contracting. Make it up. Make that up too, like sticky, like transitory, like temporary. And I still want to know, honestly, where's the accountability from Janet Yellen, who was the, the thing, whatever it is, you know, that's what she looks like with her little doughboy freaking, you know, hairdo. She was like the main proponent of temporary and transitory and peaking as well. How many times did they tell us that inflation was peaking and it's, it hasn't peaked yet? It's going up and up and up and up and higher. And it will continue to do so as long as central banks are continuing to fill, fulfill their end game here. Again, think about it. Crushing the global economy and they're doing this by killing the consumer. At the same time, inflation is running rampant. It's a perfect storm. This has been set up. It's deliberate. So central banks can pressure the middle class. What are they doing? What are they doing? What is? What have we discussed here repeatedly? a new feudal system, people. The middle class is being systematically erased. And part of this here, again, and this was factored into the equation with regard to how the Federal Reserve was going to play this out. They realized that members of the middle class were going to swipe those credit cards, swipe those credit cards, uh, borrow and borrow and borrow even more as they make themselves more slaves to the system. You understand? It's all baked in here. And again, where's the accountability? I have no idea. It's nowhere. All we're going to hear is from brain dead presidents telling us how the CPI number yesterday, did you hear him yesterday? The CPI is great. Oh, it's fantastic. Even though inflation is rising, we're doing great. My economic policies are working. His economic policies. Let's see. Hmm, let me think. Let me think about this for a moment. Maybe you want to ponder this. Who runs the financial system? Well, it's central banks. Who runs the economy? Well, it's central banks. Who runs the markets? Well, it's central banks. Again, I told you, they could put in, I showed you my evil Knievel doll yesterday. They could put my evil Knievel doll behind the Resolute desk and it won't matter, okay? It won't matter. It's the central banks running the entire show, period. All right, so with that said, look, you and I, we need to keep our eyes on, on risk in this market. Okay. Clearly we have a problem. Clearly there is instability in the debt market. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, I told you yesterday, I told you the day before that, I told you last week, and I'm telling you right here and right now, if central banks do not act immediately, it, like today, okay, and I'm not lying about this, if they don't act now to foster the, or, or, or project or however they want to do it, uh, the illusion of stability in the debt market. In other words, they got to get in here and buy more. It's over. Okay, the market is going to free fall. Now, you understand what I've been telling you. If they can maintain that illusion, and I still say they're going to. I still say they're going to. So I am fully expecting Gregory Manorino and maybe most of you. I want to hear from you. Okay, here's the question. Do you believe... And I've asked you this before. Central banks are about to let this whole thing go or are they going to get into the debt market and start buying more debt? And we can see this reflected in the MMRI. It will drop. We are at 243. We are seven points away from the first line in the sand. Now, this isn't a Greg Manorino line in the sand here. This is gauging from what we witnessed the last time. You remember... When we crossed 300 with the MMRI, literally all hell was breaking loose. They floated out Oink Man, Nick the Pig, Mary Daly got floated out. And they, you know, they said, oh, the Fed's going to do more. Don't worry, everyone. The Fed's going to do more. And that's exactly what happened. We watched 10-year yield drop, global bond yields drop, uh, the MMRI plummet. We were like in the teens, like 215, 216. Now we're climbing and climbing and climbing now. When we hit 250, not too long ago, same thing. All hell broke loose. They float out this, that, and the other person, this Fed president, that Fed president. So we know where the red lines in the sand are. 250 is the first line in the sand. 
Do you believe, do you believe that they, were, they are going to allow the MMRI to cross 250? Look, they don't follow the MMRI. At least I don't think they do. This is a relatively new tool, which I created. You know that. But the MMRI, in its original form, a lot of you are writing to me about the, uh, writing to me about the MMMRI. I did not create the MMMRI. Nobody special finance. He created it. Great guy. All right. I, I, it's interesting how he factored this together, but what he didn't do is recalculate um, how it should be measured. And that's a problem um, with the calculation. He's, he, maybe he wants to, you know, Jack, switch it up, bro. Uh, Jack Gamble is the guy who came up with that. Smart guy. Really smart guy. I love him. Honestly, his work is phenomenal. I, I, I've talked about his work many, many times, but the MMMRI in his current form is not, in my view, uh, any better at all than the MMRI. If Jack wants to recalculate those numbers, maybe it can be. Uh, but as of right now, the MMRI stands as the standard for which you and I should be gauging risk in this market. I mean, it's pretty much in our face. I put a lot of work into that. I didn't just uh, pull that out of a hat. I, I tested it. I worked on it. And I think it reflects reality in this market. Now, again, you know what to look for, people. You know what to look for. There's no guesswork here for you and I. We are that market is a time bomb. It's a time bomb and it's going to go off. I just don't believe it's going to go off now. I really don't. I know Michael Burry is saying yes. I know Rickard is calling for this crash soon, mid-year. You've got Bank of America with a warning. you got Morgan Stanley with a warning. you got JP Morgan with a warning here. Maybe they're right, but it's all predicated about risk in the debt market, which again uh, allows us to gauge risk in the stock markets of the world. A crash is coming, people. A crash of truly epic proportions is coming. B biblical proportions, should I say. It's going to lead to a resource problem on a grand scale, but it's not going to begin or end in the stock market. It's going to begin and end in the debt market. And you all know that. What are you going to do about it? You're going to bet against the debt. Become your own central bank. These have been my words since day one, okay? Mimic what the central banks do and you're going to be okay, okay? Central banks are hoarding gold. They also have silver. They're also buying the market. They're also involved heavily in the debt market manipulation. And let's see what they do. So here's the question. Do you believe central banks are going to get in here and start buying more debt? Or do you believe we're going to watch the MMRI climb past 250 and this market is going to fall in a big way? All right. That's it. Love all of you. I mean that from the heart. I will see you at the end of the day for my post-market wrap-up live, okay, uh, 1.05 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 4.05 Eastern Standard Time. I promise you the lighting will be better. I'll be using natural light here from the window. Anyway, um, so that's all, people. Okay, I will see you later. Please comment. Please share the video. I'm out of here.